everybody, and welcome back to Spirits of Success, our comedy video game design podcast, where we take your horrible, nasty, stinky, cursed <laughs> suggestions from the internet and turn those into the next triple A bestsellers. Ooh, I like the addition of like we take their sweet, nasty, uh, awful video game ideas because that you know we got to start really leaning into that. I feel like last week with our guest Jupiter. Oh, hello, my name is Blake. By the way, I'm one of your hosts. And I'm AJ Hart, and I think I already said that, but I'm not certain anymore. <laughs> um, I feel like our last game with Jupiter, like, we made two very, very good horror games. I, this week, AJ, I want to make a stinky game. I want to make a game that, like, will, uh, one, make Spiritual su- Successor bankrupt. I'm sorry, you're trying to bankrupt our company now? I mean, like, isn't that the goal whoa, with every... Whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 Our goal, our goal <laughs> is to, make, is to make an ass load of money. Mm. I want Jeff Bezos to look at us and be like, damn, that's a lot of money. I want the new Avengers game to look at us and be like, fuck, why didn't we think of that? <laughs> For those that don't know, the new Avengers game is absolute fucking garbage, in my well, opinion. Have you played it? No, but like, we were talking. <laughs> no, I no, I fucking okay. hate that no, game. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I do want to, ex- I, 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 have, I have seen a lot of this game, though I have not played it. I looked into it. Each mm-hmm. character has their own fucking battle pass that you need to buy individually. S- just su- you, you, that is the suckiest thing I have ever heard in my life. After paying sixty dollars, the last thing I want to do is how many characters are in in the launch game in the launch thing? Probably it's like, like six, six. It's like six, and each battle pass is like what five to ten bucks. AJ, Probably, yeah. it's not a sixty dollar game. It's a fucking ninety dollar game now, and I hate it. I hate it. Thank you. I hate it. Yeah. yeah, you're talking shit, but let me let me propose to you this: Iron Man, but he's got a Santa hat on now. Yeah. Sister money, please. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like, I just I'm okay with the idea of games charging premiums for things. It's just really dumb when gameplay is locked behind, like, basic gameplay is locked behind a paywall. Imagine if Destiny was like, hey, you can do these raids, but you gotta pay for the raids, and you also need to pay for the uh, the tra- the battle pass to get those things from the raids. Um, Blake, I do hate to have, have to be the person that says this, but I do believe that there is stuff locked behind a paywall. There's entire missions that, like, you and I get to do because we pay for the season pass. Uh-huh. But you know those missions that w- where we've been like climbing inside the pyramids or whatever, and mm-hmm. like being like, oh damn, there's all sorts of like yucky well, yuck goo over well, here. Well, but that's because it's DLC, and DLC no, I that's understand. That's part of the season pass, dog. It's part of. Oh well, okay. That's I'm okay with that <laughs> because it's like it's one fucking mission, and it's and you get an exotic out of it. Yeah, but this is like the core narrative, right? Like we're we're in game experiencing what it's like to be climbing all around inside these pyramids and seeing these characters be like, really? damn. Yeah. Is it th- is really this those? Is the, this I thought is those what's exotic going to missions were the just next, next thing. No, I thought those exotic missions were just for like, like a little side story. It's no, not I like think they're core pretty narrative. important. Really, they're core narrative. Yeah, last season, <sighs> the season before you and I started playing, there was this whole like season mission about like you the characters went back in time and saved this cool dude named saint 14 oh and that's right i didn't and you, pay for the season oh, pass right. then so i didn't get any of that oh no aj i hate to break it to you but destiny's a bad game dang dang i am gonna play it later today though dude can and- we talk about another video game that i've been <laughs> playing though like i love talking about like avengers and uh, and ha- how much we hate that game, even though we haven't touched it. I, need to I mean, talk about it's a, a great, game it's a great role very, model game. Very, very good. All right, tell me about and it. And did chomp our flavor a little bit. Oh shit! Okay. So there's this game out there right now called Genshin Impact, and I would have loved to have talked about it last week, but we had a guest on, and that mm-hmm. took priority. Mm-hmm. Genshin Impact is a game that took Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild and said we can make it better, and then they did. Oh, that's right. That's right. And then, and we said, okay, Genshin Impact, that's pretty crazy of you to, like, build the whole magic system and build fun mechanics about, like, you know, you can put things on fire and then you use your cool swirly powers and get the fire everywhere. And if an enemy's on fire, you can shoot it with lightning and it takes bonus damage. All this fun stuff with the magic interacting with things. I have to make sure all of my devices are silent. <laughs> but then they said, okay, this game rules. Let's add a character thing over it. You gather up a bunch of little friends and you go on an adventure. Blake, how do you think that you unlock those little friends? Uh, you have to go defeat them in battle out in the wild. It's a gotcha system, baby. Wait, what? 
<laughs> oh wait, no, I remember you fucking telling me about this. You gotta like you gotta like random roll the characters. Yes. Much oh, like I... Fae or Pokemon Masters or Dungeon and Dr- not Dungeon and Dragon Dragon Quest. No, let's be honest. Puzzle Dungeons Quest. and Dragons is a gotcha game. You gotta pay. <laughs> Dungeons you, and Dragons is. You gotta, a... <laughs> you gotta Actually, basic. I think there is a Dungeons and Dragons called like Idle Heroes on your phone game. That doesn't that surprise is a gotcha me. game. Dungeons but, and Dragons is pretty sold out at this point. <laughs> it, it's like Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild, but if you could have a bunch of different characters and all those characters were locked to a gotcha. See, I I don't like that idea. Because uh, here's the thing, when I but it's free to I play. Like, like this game is free. Right. There's no, plenty sure. of characters that are in the game that are given to you, so you can still play most of the game fine. Sure, but I like the idea of like uh, let's use a fighting game for example. Like you are going through Street Fighter, you're going through Tekken. How you unlock characters is you have to progress through the story and then like defeat that character in battle, and then now you can use them in your fight. Mm-hmm. The idea of like I don't know like. It, it, it just might just be me personally is like, I'd like to know how much time a game will cost me ahead of time. Cause uh-huh. I, it's like, I know like there's an, in, there's an investment, like there's so many games out there to play. And then the idea of a gotcha game being like, Hey, I would really love to play this, but not knowing how long I need to play it to get to the stuff that I want to just sounds more like a well, waste you, of no, time. No, you can play the whole game. You just maybe won't get the cool little ice boy. Yeah. You can play through this whole game. They're just gonna. You're not gonna get the little ice lad. Yeah, but like no ice I, lad for you. I, I, you, you pick up a game because you want to play a specific character. Like I pick up Doom because I want to play Doom guy. I pick up Dishonored because I want to play like Emily Caldwin and Corvo. Like that. I don't know. Like I just. I feel like just logging in. But then again, there is a lot of There's joy like five in like characters hate, like, that I've gotten just from playing the game's story. Okay, but like, but what like if there, that, there what if that, are what characters? If that, Okay. I mean, yeah, maybe this is just like a good like idea for a game for like pushing you to do things out of out of your normal play style. Like Hades. Like when I first booted up Hades, I thought I was just gonna be nothing but like the spear or the shield guy, but like the mechanic of you get more XP depending on which one you go in in pr- makes you improvise and makes you experience new shit that's out of your comfort zone. So maybe this game leads into that. Like, Wait, it have just you like... played a gotcha game before? No, because I've seen what it's done oh, to you. <laughs> you're, you're not kidding. It. You see, the glory of a gotcha game is, is the, the gambling, glory of is it. Is the gambling aspect or the, the... The beauty of a gotcha game is not the characters that you get. It's about the characters you don't get. It's like jazz. Mm. You know how jazz is like, it's about the beats you don't get? No, that is absolutely not what jazz is about. <laughs> And jazz... so... No, jazz is quite the opposite. It's like, hey, I feel this thing. I'm going to go do this thing right now. And That's so, what jazz is about. <laughs> it's about the beats you don't hit. It's about the characters you don't snag in the gotcha. Ugh, it's about right. it's about knowing that your friend wants the really really sexy librarian character, and you get it, and you rub it in their <laughs> face, and you say ha 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 ha. Okay, that okay. I got this person. Okay, okay. I can get be I can get behind that. But here's the thing that determines you know for me. Played a gotcha game. I have never played a gotcha game because I've seen what it's done to people, and I feel okay. like I can. I feel like I can get gotcha games via osmosis because. <laughs> actually, I want to tell. I silenced this device. <laughs> I oh, want to my other device. Hold on, let me find my cell phone. <laughs> while you're while you're finding your cell phone, it's a little quick story uh, via gotcha game. So AJ is very very into Fate Grand Order. I'm very supportive of him and in his addiction. He hasn't spent real money on it yet, so I'm very very proud of him. Well, that's not true. You, oh, no, I'm disappointed now. Um, <laughs> Fate Go is the only time I've ever seen somebody drive, literally drive an hour to go to a beach to, su- to like, increase the vibes for a certain summon and getting that summon. Yeah, I it was needed, like the I most needed magical summer thing. Arturia. You needed summer, summer Arturia. Arturia was hanging out at the beach. So I had to go to the beach and get my beach vibes going so she would come hang out. And to clarify, this is not like Pokemon Go where, like, Pokemon are limited to certain areas. This is, like, a fucking like gamble like this is like there was n- no no it's magic first it is, of all okay, okay it's it's yes it's it's the belief of magic it and you went there and you got it and i remember us being like so fucking hyped for you and just Hell like yeah. i don't i don't I, it's like i it had ruled. no because it's just like i i think the joy of gotcha games for me is just seeing my friends have a good time i'm like okay cool they're having a good time and I, <laughs> that's that's enough for me I'm going to sucker you into a gotcha game when you're going to get just just horribly right. in deep. AJ, AJ, 
if they came out with a berserk gotcha game I would be the first in line. So Crunchyroll has a has a gotcha game. Uh, I forget the name of it. I think it's called like something Summoners, and they are about to do, or they just did a Berserk crossover. See, I don't want to have to play a whole nother game just to get my Berserk. I want Berserk exclusive. Well, gotcha th- this game. game this game gets all sorts of characters. It's got One Punch Man in there. It's got Konosuba characters. It's got I mean, probably but, like Digimon in there somewhere. I don't, I it don't just snags a bunch of anime character rights and then puts I them just, into a gotcha game. You're so wise and strong and powerful. <laughs> I only have so many hours to give, man. <laughs> All right. Before we jump into game submissions, here is two weeks ago, we did a uh, a panel for our newest uh, flagship console. Here's a little snippet from the showcase. Spiritual Successor Games. Hello, and welcome to our new state-of-the-art digital press conference. Today, we have the pleasure of introducing the next half-step in the gaming evolution. I can see many of you are excited, which is perfect. See, we here at Spiritual Suck understand gamers, and we aim to prove it today while we show you a collection of console features and reveal a few JPEGs of upcoming games. Yeah, I'm easily steered by the implications of a game. Now, as you can see here on our large digital screen, we have two JPEGs of two different video games. One is Working Class, and the other is Beautiful Joe Action Attraction. These two key images will be all that we show you for a long, long time. woo This is literally all I needed! The suck box won the console war! Woo! But we're not done yet, are we, AJ? No, we are not, Blake. You see, today we are excited to tell you, not show you, some of the most exciting things about our next generation. First, we want to stress that we hear all of our audience's issues. You all want true backwards compatibility. We are excited to announce that the Suckbox series will be compatible with all novelty controllers. The Nintendo Donkey Kong Bongos, the Nintendo GameCube mic, the Nintendo Hey Pikachu controller, and the Nintendo Mario Dance Pad. What about the Nintendo Power Glove? What about the Nintendo Rob? What about Game Boy SP card? We have announced two JPEGs. How are you still mad? Second, our company is focused on fixing the digital marketplace for our consumers. The worst thing about the digital marketplace is that you can't make connections. You lose the feeling of another person telling you, That'll be $60, sir. And don't we miss that human... transaction? So we slapped on this sweet fucking credit card machine! I know, I know. They said we couldn't do it. They said it wasn't cost effective and that it didn't make any sense, but we showed them. Stupid lawyers. Stupid lawyer Jerry. Antitrust laws or whatever. Well, I got something you can trust, Jerry from legal. I trust that we're about to make a shit ton of money. How about that? Woo, baby, money! See that, Jerry? You see this crowd? They love us. <clears throat> and that, dear gamers, wraps up today's showcase. Thank you, and fuck Jerry, Jerry from, from legal. legal. Thank you so much for reminding me that that existed, Blake, because I totally <laughs> forgot. <laughs> Most people did. It was a very forgetful showcase. We didn't we didn't make uh, the top page of IGN, showcase. which is kind of sad. It was a very small showcase. People lost their shit, though. Like, the idea of, like, Donkey Kong Bongo seeing a resurgence in 2020, I think. It was the least expected thing, but I think people are most excited for it. That is the thing that most people are excited for, but I think the thing that most people are talking about is how much they hate Jerry. So yeah, Jer- that's nice yeah, to see. Fuck Jerry from legal. Oh yeah, I it's, hate Jerry see, from legal. AJ and I, He's dumb and doesn't understand see, here's, me. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. AJ and I are really dedicated towards making the worst games possible and making just like the most fucking batshit experiences that make us the most money. Jerry is the reason we sometimes have to make a good game. He's like, oh, you got it. We just got to <laughs> make games that are fun. Like, why can't games be fun and just joyful and, and good pieces of media? And we're like, fuck you, Jerry. You don't get it. You don't get the art. We're, stu- we're two geniuses here with big ass brains coming up with games based off of other IPs and making them terrible. That's what yeah, we, we do don't, here. We don't get to de- decide where the lightning strikes. We have lightning and it's going to strike everything. We hope that it's going to strike something that people love so we can destroy it. But sometimes <laughs> it will strike sand and make a beautiful glass thing so that people can carve a swan out of it. A beautiful glass thing. 
In case anybody's wondering how I know that lightning striking makes a glass happen, uh, I watched the movie Sweet Home Alabama a bunch when I was a kid. Oh, I thought you were going to quote that scene from Bionicles where, like, the fire and the earth guy are like, fire and earth makes glass. You remember that sweet fucking scene from Bionicle, the movie? <laughs> no, Probably not. Do not. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you're missing hey, out. He surfs lava in that movie. That does sound really dope. Although he is made of metal, so it's probably just the same as like surfing water for him, huh? Mm, yeah, that's true. It's like, it, 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 yeah, surfing lava. Yeah, what's up? You want to give me a video game? <laughs> <laughs> we are coming up on the 15 minute mark, huh? We're a quarter of the way through the show. <laughs> uh, gonna be editing that. <laughs> Our first mission comes to us on Reddit from user Too Many Bees. One person says a job, the other says a genre. Combine them to make a game with an unlikely hero. I examples: Scientist plus FPS is Half Life. Engineer plus horror. Engineer plus horror equals Dead Space. All right. All right. All right. So, which one do you want to be? You want to be genre or you want to be job? I want to do genre because I know that if I leave you to get genre, you're just going to say neo-noir. <laughs> what? No, no. You you, you give me, you think too little of me. Okay. You ready to roll? All right. All right. All right. All right. Um, yeah, I actually, I do have a cool job. That's very cool. All right. Underwater neo -noir. welder. <laughs> you fucking son of a bitch. But actually, wait, hold on. You're onto something. You're onto something. Well, actually, no, they've already done that. I was going to say an underwater noir. I'm like, that sounds genius. And then I'm like, oh, yeah, Burial at Sea exists. I was going to say just Bioshock, but yeah. <laughs> just Bioshock. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. How can we turn an underwater welder into a noir story? And also, oh, like, uh, man, like everything I'm thinking, like underwater neon lights. I'm like, oh, they already did that. That's Bioshock. Hey, you want to try this Bioshock, again? Bioshock, isn't it? You want to try this again? Yeah, let me try again. Let me think about a genre of not neo-noir. Yeah, give me a le legit, like, and I'll, do you want me to think of another job or do you want to keep with the underwater welder? Yeah, think of a different job. Okay. Well, I think of a genre. Give me a minute. All right. All right. I have the next job I want to do. All right. I'm ready. All right. Three. Three. Two, two, one. Lumberjack. Coming of age story. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. So, yes. so it's life yes. is strange, yes. but with a lumberjack. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 So the elements of any good coming, coming of age story is like, they do their life one way that isn't working. And the journey is finding out what is the correct way to go about their life. Like Napoleon Dynamite was... They are trying to, you know, fit into what is going on. They're trying to fit into their uncle's, you know, to what their uncle thinks a man, quote, should be, you know, play football, be manly. But he learns at the end of it is like he's going to be his weird self who likes to draw and do kick ass fucking dances. So what is like the yeah, well, way, what's this, the what is the wrong way that we want to lean into? Do we want to lean into like a Napoleon Dynamite? Maybe a uh, ladybird. Ooh, ladybird would be a good one. I'm interested in a super bad style <laughs> coming of age story. Maybe, uh, maybe we careful, have a young tread lumberjack. Tread careful that's ground about... there. That, that, gave, that, gave, that movie walks some uh, questionable Yeah, we're not going to do with any of the yucky things or like the teenage <laughs> drinking or any of that stuff. Any of the stuff that feels like, it, like, ooh, I can't believe AJ would like advocate for that. Um, um, assume I'm not advocating for that. Yeah, 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 yeah. What I'm imagining is we have a young lumberjack, like this youthful lumberjack that's like, this is it. Mm -hmm. This is the night. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to fuck up so many trees. I hate those things so much. I'm going to fuck them up and tear down. I'm going to destroy a whole forest. Woo! H.J., hey, there's a... There's a party go because this is like this is small town America and the, instead of like regular like parties they do parties where they're doing activities so it's like hey are you going out to the tree cutting rave that's happening this Friday night we're gonna just blast <laughs> some rave music wear glow sticks and cut down trees <laughs> so is that is it him prepping for this the, like this is does this game take place over the course of a night or a week or is it like I think it's one week. I think it's one week and Ooh. there's like this tree, there's this tree cutting rave that's going to be happening, but there's one tree that's the biggest tree in town and no one's ever oh, been able shit. to cut it. And our oh, character's shit. like, I'm going to do it. Oh, I'm going to cut down. Could you give me a cool tree name? 
Uh, ooh, uh, the coolest tree name is like I think Iron Oak. Iron right. Oak Tree. No, Iron not the Oakwood, name of a I tree. Believe. I want a name for a tree, like like Moby Dick is the name of a whale. Ooh, you know what I mean? Um, sawtooth. Old Sawtooth. Sawtooth. So our little lumberjack is like, I'm gonna cut down old Sawtooth. This weekend, this Saturday night, I'm going to be the one to do it. And so you have to spend the week prepping yourself out. Like, how does our little lumberjack lad, Mm -hmm. little lumberjack lad, how's little lumberjack lad going to destroy (laughs) old sausage? You know what would be so funny is the opening scene is like him at school. And then like this one lumberjack woman comes over and picks on him for like, what's the biggest tree you've cut down? And like. In arrogance, like, because I think, like, any coming-of-age story is where they get in over their head or, like, say, I'm going to do something that they pos- that just can't possibly fulfill without transforming. Um, he's like, I'm going to cut down old Hickory, and he yells it at her and, like, the rest of the school. is like, you watch me at the, at the rave this Friday night. So, like, the whole plot of it is him prepping and training and trying to figure out the best way to, like, improve himself to where he can cut yes. down old Sawtooth. So yes, you yes, have you yes. just have and that I really he's fun going to like, get into some like buck wild things and buck wild misadventures, right? Maybe there's a day where he explores the idea of like, well, could I just burn it down instead? And then like, <laughs> you know, he gets into some misadventures at the match factory. Oh god. And like maybe okay, another okay, idea okay. is we've talked about uh, also one there needs to be a, like every Every coming of age story is like they're gonna go to the um him and him and his buddies are gonna go to like a dress up store and they're just trying on different outfits. Like, what's the best like to be the best lumberjack, you gotta look like a lumberjack. So there's just this dress up sequence where it's just different flannel like accessories. So you have like yes, a full like yes, one piece yes. flannel suit, you have like the jeans that come up like to your mid waist with like the uh what are they called? The straps. And it's just like it's all it's a dress up sequence, but everybody's wearing flannel is what I'm getting at. And you I know just, what this kind of reminds just, me of the idea of that. What's up? I want this game. And this is kind of a weird poll. You know how like the beginning of those open world games, like the beginning of a Saints Row or the beginning of a Grand Theft Auto. You do all of these like open world objectives where like you have a companion character that's like, oh, let's walk around and talk about this thing while we explore the world. Mm hmm. I want this game to feel like that. Like it, it has Ooh. that open world, open town aesthetic, but there's always somebody holding your hand. Like I want you to, mm-hmm. when you go into the store to look at your cool lumberjack clothes that you're going to buy, I want there to mm-hmm. have been like actually that process of you in this small town riding your bike or your tractor or whatever it is that your vehicle is. Maybe there's a whole mm-hmm. like mission about getting a good vehicle. Mm-hmm. You drive that over to the lumberjack store and then you start like purchasing your lumberjack outfits. I want, Oh, that's cool. I want like this expansive small town with a mm-hmm. timer as you're mm-hmm. prepping to cut down old hickory. Is are that you what we are you the trees named to? S- uh, sawtooth, old sawtooth. Old sawtooth. Are you imply are you implying this is like I know we quote this game all the time but I do think it has really good like a, a ticking a ticking clock mechanic uh deadly premonition. Not deadly premonition Were you- you're thinking of left for dead. No, deadly premonition also has a time based thing. Where it's like, Does hey, it? these you know these people, yeah, like these people, you know these people are gonna be here at like nine o'clock, so you have some time to kill, and then you can go there. Like, I think Dead Dead Rising took that idea and made it like much more like concise, um, but there was like a lot less room for error in De- in Dead Rising, in my opinion. Like, if you find out like you don't get like the mul- most of these cases done, you just can't finish the fucking game. So like, you kind of wasted a run, in my opinion. Well, but then again, you yeah. still get experience, so like that, it that's does make the game. Dead. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. that's what makes it so good. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. I want that. I want this like level. I think that if you fail the run, you get a bad end, and you do have to start okay. the game over. But may- how about, maybe how about, there is like a little bit of like a new game plus system. How about this? How about this? So maybe there are multiple ways you can go about doing uh, like. De- defeating old sawtooth and like proving that you know like you're you're a grown person and you know you have worth in and not to say like you have to do these uh, things to impress other people to do to, to your worth but this the core of the story is like overcoming this obstacle and growing from it is what gives him is what gives him worth um what if there it's like in a weird way what if this is like goat simulator in the sense of it's an open world and there's a bunch of different ways you can go about things so like hey on this run i found out i'm gonna go down this supernatural thing and i'm gonna get weird like little powers that allow me to try and do this but that doesn't work out this run i'm just gonna do 
uh, an all fashioned run or I'm going to like um, try and make the most money to where I can get a team of people like a team of like cronies to help me chop this thing down together. Would that could something like that work? But then, yeah, I love the idea of there being alternate routes. Like, I'm trying to think of, like, what resets it. So, like, in Hades... Oh, he wakes up you, from a bad dream. You, he wakes up and, like, he's failed the mission. And oh, he wakes up and he's like, oh, what a bad dream. Whoa, what oh, a he, crazy he, he, dream. He wakes up, like, after, like, him... After them saying um, they're going to take on Old Sawtooth. Like, it's like, yeah, the, like, like Sunday, the day after that interaction. Yeah, Friday night, on okay. all Friday night, he says, check this out. Next Saturday, I'm mm-hmm. going to destroy Old Sawtooth. Ooh. And then, Old like, the, the, game, the game starts on Saturday, and it's, like, seven S- days remain, and you just start exploring the town. You you leave mm-hmm. your house, and you're like, all right, well, I guess first things first, I have to decide where my first stop's going to be. Maybe, mm-hmm. like, your mom's like, oh, could you go down to the grocery store and pick up some groceries? And, like, that's that's kind of the tutorial of you understanding that, like, you know, you have a way to travel around town. You have a way to, like, purchase things in a store. You have a mm-hmm. way to communicate with, like npcs when you walk towards them Mm -hmm. so what would be because i'm trying to figure out like what is the because if this is a coming of age actually you know what hold on let's put a pin in this let's talk about some other games yeah all right so you want to give you want to grab one yeah i like i like i really do like this idea and i think there's some legs there there is definitely nug potential for old for old sawtooth um i just also want to we got a lot of submissions this week and i would love to share some of them this comes from blue on twitter at blue substitute Blue Substitute suggests Cthulhu. <laughs> the Dreaming Dead, the Dreaming Dead old ones have woken up as dreamy anime characters with no memory of their past. You have to help them discover themselves without ushering in the end of the sane age. <laughs> okay, there's a lot to unpack here. So for those that don't know, the the lore of of like the Cthulhu mythology is basically. All of the great old ones are like you think Cthulhu or Narthotep. Um, Narthotep. I, I fucking H.P. Lovecraft didn't know how to write words, so like <laughs> sometimes the names are just like impossible. Just keyboard smashed. But that's, they, they, well, that's that's also kind of part of the lore is that like you can't humans don't have the ability to physically say these names. Um, but basically, they're all sleeping and they're all dreaming, and the whole goal is is that when they wake up the world actually like ends and implodes on itself. They don't necessarily know if it's a, um, a Link's awakening style, which is like an amazing fucking video game and story where it, once the, the egg hatches and the whale wakes up, the whole Island disappears. Like there's this, there's this idea that if they wake up the earth and all that we know real reality will blink out of existence. And there are other things where like, if Cthulhu wakes up, uh, he's at the bottom of the ocean, so like everything will come into a tidal wave. So how do we take cosmic horror and make it really fucking hot? <laughs> well, easy. First of all, we just have to think about like the common traditional views, right? Cthulhu mm-hmm. always has like this like beard looking like tentacle thing, kind of like Davy Jones from the hit movie Pirates of the Caribbean two and three. So maybe. <laughs> Maybe God, already, did we, so and then there's like one scene where like he gets turned back into a human and he just has like this big beard instead of like the crazy tentacles. So obviously, Cthulhu is going to be this like real hunky bearded gentleman. Mm-hmm. So, um, is what this is, going what do people to be... usually draw Narlathotep to look like? They are very, very, very tall, very, very lanky. Um, mm. I always pictured Narl- sexy in a rat Narl- kind of way. Well, Nathar- Nar- Narthotep is also. There have been renditions of them de- uh, depicted as an Egyptian man, uh, supposedly so fucking hot he can conquer the world, which is definitely something we should be leaning into. Um, I'm seeing a lot of Narlathotep's got like a big tentacle on the top of their noggin, so definitely it's yes. somebody with like a high ponytail that's like their hair is really long. They look um, like Gone maybe from they have Hunter x Hunter. <laughs> well, I was thinking <laughs> less goes, like Gone and goes, more like somebody oh. maybe with a rat tail, but... Yeah, Ooh, a, a gone situation might be nice too. Um, just like really, really long hair. They're like very lanky. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe something more akin to the twins from How to Train Your Dragon. Like oh, that general you body shape. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You got any other so, cosmic horror monsters that I can assign uh, archetypes on. to? I actually have a... 
I actually have a book right here to my right of a bunch of different Cthulhu monsters. Hold on one second. All right, so you have Azathoth, you have uh, a dark, a deep one, uh, you have Elder Thing, you have Fungi from, uh, actually, you have Yugoth, you have... Okay, Azathoth, Azathoth, I'm immediately running into an issue. Uh, if you could hook up a quick Google search for Azathoth and try to tell me how you, you would get... make this into, like, a nice, pretty anime character. <laughs> it's a slime girl. <laughs> Well, it's just a big worm in space, isn't it's it? Just, it's just a big worm that has like that looks like a weird like fungal thing. This uh, one's a you tough all... one to crack, huh? <laughs> okay, no, okay, 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 okay. Here's the thing: before we decide on all of our monsters, what is mm-hmm. the backdrop of to the show, and what is like, what is a game that we can think of that is comparable to something like this? Because I'm thinking along the lines of... Other than Dream Daddy? Okay, let's... uh, Dream Daddy's a great example. So is this... What is the setup? So what I'm thinking is... This is actually after they woke up and the world ended. When... When Cthulhu and all of the other... uh, What all of the other, you know, deities of the Cthulhu universe woke up... The world blinked out of existence and reset. What came out of it... Re- her real world turned into an anime dating sim. So this is post-apocalypse. So like I'm everything's kind of like is the goal here to get them to sleep with you so that they will sleep forever? <sighs> Are you trying to I mean, get now them back you... to sleep? Is I mean, that is that the that's angle? Not, that's not what I was thinking, but like the that's an interesting angle to play. <laughs> And maybe, okay, here's the thing, here's the thing. Maybe it doesn't need to be sexual. Like, maybe the whole game is about, like, getting them into a such a calm place that they fall asleep again. Yeah, so, you just like, gotta get them to hey, chill out and lay down. Take a little nap. Yeah, cause, yeah, Cthulhu really loves the ocean, so what do you, what's your character gonna do? You're gonna do, that's the beach episode, where you take yeah, how all do you of, get a sailor to take a nap? <laughs> all of the, you take all of the Cthulhu monsters, and it's a beach episode. <laughs> and we, AJ, AJ, hold on, hold on. We release this. It's episodic, so like a Telltale game. So like each episode is a different like Cthulhu god, and that's and like you have to like at you have to okay. figure out the right route to put that monster back to bed. But they're I'm like very they're interested like, in an episodic dating sim. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So like and then because uh, like the, at the end of the day, and maybe that's kind of the bittersweetness of it of like. Your character knows that they are, you know, these monsters that can bring the apocalypse to the world. And so, but there's this bittersweet thing of, like, these monsters don't know who they are and don't know what their powers are. So, like, you could actually fall in love with them, but it's, like, so it's one of those, like, loves that is, was not meant to be. And that's kind of the vibe of the whole story. Like, each you you talk to Cthulhu and he's, like, I, like, you find out Cthulhu's a super big, um... What's it called? Uh, anti uh, waste. Uh, man, why am I blanking <laughs> on this? Man, just a big man, environmentalist. Hi- and big env- Thank you so much. I'm a fucking idiot. Uh, he's just a big environmentalist, and like you just like see why he's so passionate about protecting the ocean. It's like you play the antithesis of the Cthulhu monsters, primarily for two reasons. One, it would be really nice to see those monsters being nice, and two. I think a lot of Cthulhu mythos is powered by racism and homophobia and um, what's the thing where you you just hate people from 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 different worlds than you? Uh, xenophobia. Um, um, yeah. So like, I so, would love to take well, those themes okay. and shit on them and then like turn them into something nice. Yeah. Well, okay. So just so that I'm kind of up to date, what we're proposing is the setup is that the worlds have sort of blinked out of existence and you are for Mm -hmm. whatever reason responsible for bringing these beings back to rest. We're on the Mm -hmm. world. There's no one else here except for these people and they've, or these, these beings that have all been personified and you just need to get them to rest again so that we can start over. Also, the reveal is, is that, you know what the end of this game is? It's revealed that you are also one of the Cthulhu monsters, and the game ends with you going to sleep. Like your uh, your yes. eyes like slowly blink close, and you just like, and then like the screen maybe goes you're back, Azathoth. and then you can hear like, maybe you're Azathoth, and like you, because Azathoth I believe is like the is the leader of all, because Cthulhu is like I know a lot of people think they are like 
the core thing for Cthulhu, the Cthulhu mythos because Cthulhu mythos, but I think the Azathoth Cthulhu-verse. is like the god of is the god of all gods, basically. So that would actually that would make sense because they're like, hey, the balance needs to happen again, and everybody needs to go back to go back to you know go back to bed. <laughs> so how so, would a, I love this like episodic like dating simulator essentially like we get one episode for Azathoth or uh, one episode mm-hmm. for Cthulhu and it's like this fun little adventure about you meeting the sailor falling in love with this sailor understanding who this sailor really is and eventually just getting cozy enough to take a nap mm-hmm. and oh, then you would move like... on to the one with the really long ponytail who's really scary looking and I don't know what that story is yet but what this would do would be like six they're a hairstylist they're mini- a hairstylist AJ they're a hairstylist <laughs> they're a hairstylist and they have no one to like hairstyle for other than you oh. so you just go in and you sit down and you have this like long like four hour journey and this four hour character exploration with these characters. I think I think there should be other people in these universes because I have seen dating sims where there's just like no other people other than the main characters and it makes the conversations very repetitive because it'll just be like, Oh, nobody's around, so let's do this thing. But okay, then again, so everyone's there's also, still alive. Actually, these people are here if they realize who they are. You know who they are. You know that's, that's Cthulhu. Yes, you know that's that the that's uh, Narlathotep. You need mm-hmm. to re- help these people find peace before they go become completely mm-hmm. unstable and end the world. Each one of them is capable of it. AJ. So, you know, every, what? Wait, hold on. Every dating game has a rival. Or your rival is just some. It's just like another. I'm it's sorry. Like, every um, dating game has a rival. What are you fucking talking about? Oh, you mean like? Do, wait, do you mean like a mean like, person, or do you mean like somebody yeah, else that is also well, trying to date all these people? Yeah, I've that's never what I'm played so. a dating game that has another person trying to date these people. What are you talking really? about? Really? Actually, you Name know, one. now that I think about it, I don't. I you, you know, you you're right. Like actually, I don't know you where the fuck I got things. that idea. You just said a word. I, I, you just said I just, a said, I'm out sorry. Loud. I'm sorry. I, hey, at least I'm admitting I made a fucking mistake. Come on, come me some slack here. <laughs> no, like, no, isn't I? I could have sworn. Maybe it's maybe that's just a trope I got from like fucking movies. Yeah, like movies. But it could you do something like that where there is actually a rival in this game, where that is trying yes, to do the opposite is like to keep. Like they're like they're somebody that is like their activities for dating the old ones are like things that like thrill them, like things that would wake them up. So like doing more extreme shit rather than sleepy shit. Yeah, because like one of the things that we're going to wrestle with doing this episodically is like what carries the through line from one point to the other to the other? How do we keep upping the ante? How do we keep the excitement going? And that would mm-hmm. be by introducing this other variable that seems to be trying to egg on these awokened ones and end the world you play Mm -hmm. as azathoth trying to keep these people back to rest so that you don't have to end the whole world because they're all awake and they don't know maybe you're incredibly Mm -hmm. lazy the awoken ones are up but they don't really know why they're up yet so you're just like "Mm, five more minutes please see you know what'd be so cool so you're trying to get them all asleep there's a Mm -hmm. different awoken one maybe that is just as aware as you and is like we gotta go i'm sick of it we're ending it all Mm-hmm, so you mm-hmm. try to get these people back to rest. You're trying to get Cthulhu to take a little nap on the beach side and go to sleep mm-hmm. forever. Not dying. Kind of dying. They're weird. So well, th- I think I think what would happen is the, the moment they like they have such a deep rest, their body dematerializes. And it's like these really it's like this really beautiful, like kind of glittery sequence where like, yeah, because the whole thing is, is that it's like cosmic horror. So what if it's like we turn it into cosmic love? So like their glitters like evaporate and rise towards the sky and become like the stars in the sky. Ooh. And that's like how each and, chapter ends, basically. And if you do the chapters, it's like, well it's like enough, that squid. Because, it's like, like <laughs> mm mm-hmm. There, like, there's no real right way to play an episodic game, I don't think. Except this one, there mm-hmm. will be, like, the right way to play it. And you have to go mm-hmm. through every chapter kind of detecting the clues that you can from this separate force. Until the end mm-hmm. of the game, if you've done really, really good through all of the episodes and you got to our season finale, you can eventually get this rowdy, nasty person to just chill out and come take a nap with you. And then you're going to nap forever. Oh, that's right. So, like, the person... You know what you could do is that... um, Because Narlothep... I mean, not Narlothep. uh, Azathoth, I think, has, like, these, like, lesser beings that are always hovering around it. Maybe, like, those are one of... It was, like, maybe they're tied to you in some way. They're, like, a... a, They are also Azathoth as you are Azathoth. So, like, you once Ah. you guys nap together, 
that like and that, it's I like don't know. kind of about finding peace yeah finding peace coming coming to terms with like the two sides of yourself and all that and all that stuff so it's like it's just like a really really wholesome sleeping dating sim yeah yeah, there we go. Episodic okay, that's nice. So like you'd be Episod- you'd kind of launch into basically a scenario already because it's mm-hmm. episodic I'll- and you don't have like th- real control over who you're going to date. Mm-hmm. Dating One sim thing- is a very loose term for what this is. What? A- yeah, you're right because it's like it-, it has set endings. It's like dating sims. Like there's multiple options that you can do, and though all of those options can end various different ways. So this is like let's think of it more as like a telltale game about dating the cthulhu gods and putting them back to sleep um one thing i do want to recommend though is like one big thing about like you know call of cthulhu the the role-playing game or um any sort of video games or media relating to it a lot of it is about traveling the world so what i think would be really cool is that your character in each episode it's in a new city so there's new things to experience. It's like a new culture, new world. Yeah. And it's just like, it's just like, it's like this world encompassing adventure. And it's just like, and that way it keeps things fresh. That way everything, all of the visuals are like really, really cool and really, really different episode to episode. Yeah. Each episode is a dating simulator for this one specific character. And this would be the first time that anybody's going to have a like an episodic game that they're going to bother replaying the episodes for. We're going to go ahead and space out the episodes again like they used to be back when nobody <laughs> played these games. Except now, <laughs> now they're going to have a reason to be like, I'm going to pick this up for two or three more runs because I want to see what happens if I take Cthulhu out to the bar rather than the beach. Or I want to see what happens Ooh. if I invite Cthulhu to come hang out at the aquarium instead of mm. the bar. Like, I have different places that I can take Cthulhu, different scenes that I can do with him. I want to explore mm-hmm. all of these different possibilities to get to the end. Mm-hmm. Oh, and the art's got to be and maybe, super cute. Maybe you have to go through and do the game a couple different laps to get all the clues to get the good end at the season finale. So the season finale, oh. will, in order for you to get like the good true end, the game would have expected mm. you to kind of go through these little time loops multiple times to truly understand yourself. I think I think there should be an element of item collection. So you will have yes. like, hey, you need to make sure you have the tickets for the carousel at the at the at the dwarf. Uh, when you're like, so let's say Cthulhu is in San Francisco, very nautical themed town, and then you have a Ferris wheel at the at the wharf, but you have to make sure you got the tickets earlier on in that episode. Um, yeah. So maybe something like that. But also there should be like one item hidden away in every episode that will only become relevant in the final episode where you're trying to calm the other side of yourself. So like you yes, have yes, to like yes. play, you have to make sure you get like items from it makes each episode feel a little bit more important towards like the the final episode um and there's just like any dating game that has like a little bit of a puzzle element is very fun heck yeah all right i think that's a game let me let me you want me to pull up another one yeah let's get one more and then let's let's pick a nug okay (laughs) this one comes to us on twitter from killer shrew davenport at the underscore davenporter the grim reaper is fucking bored as shit and is starting a podcast Traverse the underworld, slay demons with your scythe mic, and get answers to history's greatest mysteries from the dead who were there. Heaven's pissed, but the mattress ad money is just starting to roll in. So what I'm getting from this is that you're you're literally fighting for your interviews. So, like, you have a scythe mic, and are you're... Is it, like, a thing where you are traversing a, a part of hell to get to your boss fight, which is an interview? Is that kind of the the vibe? I think that's kind of the vibe that they're going for. Yeah, I think that's the goal. The question is, do we want to do like an action game or like a puzzler game? I would love to do a rhythm game. The idea of like the Grim Reaper doing like um, you remember uh, there's this there's this arcade that AJ and AJ and I went to eons ago when the world was was cleaner. Um, was it what? Well, the world wasn't as sick. Uh, it's called the one up, I believe, or, or it was a, it was an arcade that had a bunch of Japanese themed games round one round one. There's this one game where you had two orbs in front of you and you kind of had to like spin them in the direction of the game. So like, it's like guitar hero where you have to, 
it's hard to explain non-visually. You had to rotate the ball in the orientation of where the lines on the screen were going. So like, yeah. So you had a little yeah. spaceship, and it was. I know the game you're talking about. Yeah. You had like a little spaceship kind of, and it was running on a track. Mm -hmm. But along the track, there'd be these little circles, and these little circles would point in a direction: left, right, up, down. Mm -hmm. And when your little spaceship hit that node, you had to flick the little uh, circle analog stick knob that you had mm -hmm. into that direction. So what if you did something that combines that and there is a mic in front of you? So like you have to use your hands to orient where the Grim Reaper is on the screen to avoid obstacles. But all of your powers and all of your attacks are are you have to scream into a microphone to activate them. So like <laughs> so you have to like use your hands frantically and then you have to like a it could be. Maybe it would be word activate. I mean, like, this is a hypothetical game, so anything's possible. So you have to, like, like anime style, scream your super move. So, like, when, when Goku uses Kaioken, he screams Kaioken. Or uh, what's another so one? So you're saying you run you run Grim Reaper, mm -hmm. Grimmy. Mm -hmm. You run Grimmy through, like, the dungeon here. Like, you're controlling where he moves and stuff. But then to attack, you have to say, slash, slash. Mm-hmm. Yes. Backslash. Yes. Yes. Counterattack. Yes. 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 All right. So there's okay. there's our combat. So now the two thing other things we need to integrate are is is the ranking system like how well you did on during an episode, let's say. So like an episode of the podcast would well, be the, fighting. I, I want to I want to focus on the episodes of the podcast. Now, yes. Before we get to the scoring, because what this immediately well, makes me think of. Well, what I'm thinking is, of the scoring what, is your ad is your ad money. So like that's that's just the simple oh, thing. There so, we go. so basically, it's just like at the end of an episode, which is the fight and the podcast interview or whatever. Um, at the end of the each episode, you're like, hey, you made this much ad money during this podcast episode. That's all. Yeah. That's all I'm thinking for that. And then that ad money can be used for like upgrades and yes. other ads that you can yes. throw on to make more passive income. Yes, yes. this rules. Here's you can buy better. You can buy better works. equipment. You can buy like a better like a better podcast mister mixer mixer. So like when you scream yes. something that has an area effect, it gets much bigger as the game goes on. So like. Your area damage gets gets wider is what I, I guess, guess what I'm saying. So we know how the money works out now. I need to talk about the podcast itself, right? Okay. You've you fought your way to the boss and really quick, how are we imagining the combat working? You mentioned th is it just on a railroad the whole way until you get to the boss? I think with the boss, it'll be like a fight slash interview. So each boss will be like, I, w I will. I accept your interview, but you must fight me at the same time. So it'll be like, hey, um, oh, here's here here's how it works. Here's how it works. So basically, it's like little fight and then question. So like, hey, if but, if he's going to throw an attack, let's say the first boss I think you mentioned was Hercules, right? So let's say sure. let's say you're fighting Hercules first. He's going to attack the middle and uh, left side lane. You need to really quickly slide the balls over to the right lane to dodge the attack. And after you dodge the attack, you can ask a question. So it's like you have to dodge, attack, and then you then you get the opportunity to ask a question. If you get hit, you do not get to ask a question. And their health bar is like is like you have to ask like X amount of questions to win this fight. Moreover, so you're imagining three little railways for your character rather than just the one like the arcade game that we were mentioning before. Yeah, think of it like Galaga, where you're like on you are on one like slider basically and there's like a okay. bunch of different like rows of stuff that you can avoid or attack or there's like uh, little power-ups you can get along the way and then you can then during boss fights it's a matter of like traversing those three like dodging attacks that hit those three different lanes okay yeah okay i see now mm -hmm. okay i got it okay okay so it's like I'm going to give another more relevant cultural touchstone, if you don't mind. <laughs> Other than Galaga? You mean the game from Yeah, I'm going to drag this out of Galaga and bring it to my good friend, Sonic the Hedgehog. Oh, God. Okay. Okay, it's, yeah. It's, those, it's the grinding sections when you have, like, four grinding rails that your character mm -hmm. can be sliding on. Mm -hmm. And you can make Sonic jump from rail to rail to rail to rail. Mm -hmm. But then as you're grinding on the rail, you might see an enemy coming up. And when the enemy touches Sonic the Hedgehog, or in our case, the Grim Reaper... Mm -hmm. You would say the line, attack. Okay. 
you know, I have... That's how the core gameplay loops? How the core gameplay is? Yeah, I think that would be fun because you get to, like, scream... Like, the idea of playing a game that requires you to talk to it and scream at it just sounds really, really fun. Okay. Um, So we get to the boss fights, and the boss fights would then just be, like, the same thing, but now the boss fight is maybe moving up and down the rails. mm -hmm. Maybe the camera angle is a little bit more top-down, and now we can really see the way the battlefield runs we did just make like a 3d like we just made a better version of sonic boom <laughs> <laughs> okay i now i now i finally understand how the way that this game works okay so and then the so how does the podcast work then you're in your boss fight hercules says i'm gonna attack you five times and you dodge all of his cool attacks you close the gap and you get to hercules mm-hmm now I think the game opens up into a little bit of dragon speech because okay. what I always experience in my day-to-day life because my phone and all the technology around me is falling apart, my <laughs> internet, my phone, my phone, I can't use any of the left border or any of the right border, meaning that letters like P or A or Q or backspace, I'm no longer able to use when I'm on my phone. Sounds tough, bro. So I have to use a lot of voice to text. Mm -hmm. A lot of voice to text. Oh, no. Voice to text is my most primary use of technology these days. So what we're going to do is when you close the gap and you get in to ask Hercules a question, (laughs) you get to say, Hercules, how did you defeat the Hydra in 29 AD? Mm -hmm. And Hercules is then going to answer Mm -hmm. because you did the voice to text. Now, you need to make sure that when you're doing this pronunciation, you or you need to make sure that when you do this question, you nail your pronunciation. H-A. Because if there's anything I've learned about podcasting, it's that you are constantly, constantly trying to be a better enunciator for your words. And this game will give us that frustration. How about how about this? Because I want to throw a little wrinkle at that and like tie it into gameplay. So cause what you're pitching is is that you have to use your own dexterity and your own pronunciation to make sure you do this right. What if yes. that ability is dictated by how much damage you've taken? So, like, if the more damage your character has taken during a boss fight, the worse your speech-to-text is. So then you have to like do it become the game becomes harder. It'll be like it'll make the it'll like it's like, hey, you've taken X amount of damage. All of your vowels are going to sound fucking weird now. So like your question, yeah, like vo- yeah, the voice to text will purposefully be worse mm-hmm. because your health is so low. Mm-hmm. So like your ability, your ability to speak and ask questions is dictated by how well you are able to dodge attacks and dish them back out. And you every time and it's like it's a constant give and take because if you take damage your ability to speak gets worse but if you give damage you gain confidence and that allows your speech to text to be way more on point so damn near auto felled yes so basically it, if you are really good at this game and really good it, it makes it makes doing damage feel important because it because like before that i think it was what is the point of doing damage? Is it just a dodging game at that point? Or like, and also you can do a thing like how well you did on the level before the boss fight could give you positives or negatives going into the boss fight. Oh, I like so that. So instead of less health, you have less, let's say, confidence during, because you got to, you got to be really confident to be a podcaster, right? And so does the Grim well, Reaper. You got to be confident on Mike. That's fair. I mean, not everybody can have a really cool, like, awesome, uh, sweet, cool, hunky, good talker friend like you, AJ, to, to cover for them. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right. Not everybody's as lucky as me. <laughs> so, okay, that's a game. I, and then you just, like, each level is going to a different famous person in hell. Like, you have to do a boat ride with Charon. Because yeah. Charon hates to talk. They do not like talking. So you got to, like, beat them in a boat race across, like, the waves of the damned. That'll be dope. That would right, be like, pretty dope. All right. Nug time. What, what is our nug? Because I think we actually made, th- like, a couple of good contenders this week, huh? We did our Lumberjack dating, uh, our Lumberjack coming-of-age story. We did our uh, Grim Reaper podcast simulator. Or podcast rail shooter, I guess, would be a better thing. And then we did our dating, like, a, an episodic dating game. What do you feel is like the one we should go with? I want to lean into a lumberjack coming of age story of our little lumberjack lad. Mm -hmm. Or I want to do an episodic dating simulator. I feel the episodic dating simulator has more like I feel like we quantified it 
more than we did the lumberjack. Because like I feel, I feel both of them. We don't really know what the gameplay loop is, but I I feel like I have a better handle on like Cthulhu Cthulhu than I do lumberjack dating game. That's fair. So we want to jump over to that as our nug today. Yeah, Cthulhu. 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 <laughs> I mean, Cthulhu, it fits. It fits the vibe. You. It's not like I can say Nartho Nilarthotep. Narlithotep. Narlithotep. Thank you. It's it fits the vibe. It fits the vibe. So okay. let's talk about this gameplay loop. Let's talk about mm-hmm. what this game actually plays like. I yes. was imagining something more akin to a Dream Daddy visual novel. You have portraits of areas that you can bring your character to. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe when you're in the uh, portrait style, you in order to guide conversation, let's use the example of taking Cthulhu out to the aquarium. Mm-hmm. You can move your mouse around and you can click on a fish and that will trigger a conversation. Mm-hmm. But I don't think that anything is ever like signified as what you can click on. I mm-hmm. think that you're laid out a portrait and you can click on anything. It's you just have that a, when like, you click a little on something map. that would trigger a conversation, that conversation does act happen Ooh, that's good and then like you have to fill up like what their heart meter or their sleepy meter or something like that you fill up their chill meter chill this meter. is a very much <laughs> like you're trying to get them relaxed maybe they're mm-hmm. very anxious when you first interact with them because you know they're they just woken up they're stressed out they know that they need to do something so important mm-hmm. today but they don't know what it is yet mm-hmm. you know it'd be cool too because i feel like it would make it a little bit more layered is you look at Cthulhu, you can like look at the town map and you can get the broad strokes of what this person like this person would like um, at the beginning, let's say. So like when you think Cthulhu, they have a sailor cap on. So your immediate like your immediate responsibility, like, oh, I should do something water themed. Uh, you take them to the aquarium. Not everything at the aquarium will be helpful towards relaxing them, like going out and like going to like the tunnel where they can see all the fish is super relaxing. Going and petting sharks, it's going to stress them the fuck out. Yeah, don't bring Cthulhu around sharks. Are you kidding me? Yeah, and so they're, each area, you have, like, each episode begins with a clue of how the character looks. Now, here's so, like, my question. Mm-hmm. We mentioned that it's going to be episodic. Do we, because of this, do we want to err away from the 2D drawn style and move into a 3D world? Or are we fine doing episodic 2Ds? I think episodic 2Ds would be very fun. Cool. Just making yeah. sure. Let's get yeah. no, I think, where I think you were going. Yeah, I think Dream Daddy did it pretty good. And I think we could do it too. But the idea, so each, each episode begins with, Hey, you have a chance run in with this dr- with this dreamy anime person. Well, it's not and chance. You know who they are. You're hunting them down. That's that. You're right. You're right. You're right. Um, you run into them at where uh, in the middle of their daily lives, and you look at their appearance. So, like, you see the hairstylist has like that little like that little like thigh pocket where they keep their scissors. So you're like, oh, that's my hint that I should take them to somewhere involving hairstyling. And from there, now it becomes a puzzling game of. What are the activities in this area that will make them relax? And that's where, and then, you know, that, and out of that, you'll get your next hint of like, what's the next place to take them? Because if you find the thing that relaxed them, they'll give you another line of dialogue uh, that's a cl- that contains a clue of where to go next. So it's like, it is very linear, but it is like a lot of trial and error in each area. Yeah, and what, what, another thing that I want to mention is you mentioned the idea of, like, these long-term collectibles. Uh, what mm-hmm. I want to do also is you you can stress out your date and mm-hmm. get a bad end in the episode. But I think that in order for you to get all of those collectibles, maybe you uh, there are some areas where, like, you take your date to a wrong spot. Maybe mm-hmm. you take your – I need we need a third example, please. I don't know the name of it, but they're like – it's basically – um oh here it is a hound of tindalos you have a dog walker person okay tindalos Mm -hmm. so maybe uh, this dog walker tindalos if you take tindalos to the to the dog shelter maybe that Mm -hmm. just stresses them out really really bad yeah because like there's a lot of dogs there that are pretty unhappy so but but you need to take tindalos to the dog like the the dog uh shelter because mm-hmm. while that is going to stress them out, there are collectibles there that you're going to need for the long haul. Mm-hmm, but you mm-hmm. need to make sure that you get Tindalos to that area and do well enough there that you're able to beat that level 
to get mm. that secret long term collection. Yeah, like each each area has a bunch. Of, we can think of them as like positive mines and negative mines. There's like a bunch of things you can interact with, but like a mine, it could be like if you press the wrong thing, it explodes on you, and that lessens their relaxed level and if it yeah. gets too low like i agree with you the idea of like taking places where you have to take a risk and potentially run into negative things to get the items you need towards the end game i think is really interesting yes i think also here's the other thing that i want to mention you and mm -hmm. i talked about like the end game revealing that you were azathoth the whole time mm -hmm. i think that you find out that you're azathoth at the end of your first run in the game because I want what oh. Azathoth, I think, should have the mechanic ability for it. And what I want our game players to understand is that running through this time loop again and again on your first date or your second date or your third date is, is your important. power. That's your power. That's important to do oh. because you need to be doing it to get the long term end goal. Yeah. So at the end of our first episode, it's revealed that you're Azathoth. And now you're given the ability to rerun through and take your date to the more stressful areas to get those mm. collectibles. But mm. you do need to make sure that you still make it all the way through with a good end so that I you like, can keep those collectibles. I you, like the idea of the game ending because you, you bring up an interesting point that like one thing with any game that has like a reset mechanic, how do you justify it? What, how does that work within the story? So it's 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 their power. But then my immediate thought is, is that if this is like a dating game, you need to play with the like the story that relationships can't be you like a lot of I think everybody has like had that fantasy of man if I could just rewind like 10 minutes and that way I can just make sure I can do every little thing right so I just like I can go into each situation and come out of it like a hundred percent I feel like the game needs to end with like all with that like idea being presented you know like it, it, like if this is a dating game and your character is actually falling in love with all of these people they I need don't to think realize that Azathoth has like a time manipulation thing. I think mm. that Azathoth has a timeline manipulation thing. Mm, because I, how... I don't want to I don't want to imply the idea that Azathoth can just rewind time 10 minutes and then mm -hmm. just be like, "Ah, oh, well luckily, I missed that collectible 10 minutes ago, but I just reused my save file." You mm -hmm. have to do a complete run through the stressful things to get those collectibles to get to the oh. end of the date. And then that collectible is stored in Azathoth's how about, inventory? How, how about this? How about this? How about this? Yeah, they have the ability only when something awakens. Yes. So, like, it's not that they they can choose when to restart. Is it, it's There is a window of time. Let's say when Cthulhu wakes up, it'd be like, okay, that's... Well, that's when all the powers get unlocked and I'm able to reel it back to a set point in time. So yes. they have to start over. So like if a deep that that's our that's the rules this world plays with is if a if a if a ancient one awakens, they were able to rewind it by like the day that they awoke. So like and maybe that's how each episode is. Each episode it's is just like, like Ghost a, Whisperer. I've never heard of that. <laughs> No, not Ghost Whisperer, the other ghost show. There's a ghost show where this lady were, like worked as a coroner or something, and then if she like ran into a person that like was like a dead person, they'd be like, Help me. And then she'd wake up like the day before on the day that they died, and she'd be like, Great, I'm stuck in this time loop until I figure out how to fix the, Whoa. save this person's life. Is this a video game? No, it's not a video game, it's a TV show. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, it was a I... really cool TV show though. I'm really sad that I don't remember it. Oh, I think shit. it starred the same lady as Ghost Whisperer. I have I I could not tell you. Okay, so there there's our game. So basically, it's just like going through each episode, trying to figure out like what are all where are the minds at, where what are the things that give them the most relaxation. Yeah, and trying to get like the most collectibles so that when you get to the next one, you maybe have a little bit of a head. Maybe you can do some mm -hmm. secret like cut, bonus cut scenes if you got all the collectibles in the last one. Yeah, yeah, totally. This rules. This does rule. Hell yeah. All right. So it's called Cthulhu. Um, is there any... Do we want to take up some boss fights for this? Or do you think this is not necessarily a boss fight? I don't think this is a boss fight game. game. I think that this yeah. is the kind of game that, like, it's a narrative experience. It's discussion-based. And maybe we're going to hire in some, like, killer, like, writers, right? We're going to have, like, a nice <laughs> scene where you talk with Narlathotep. And while she's cutting hair, you have, like, this really fun conversation about how much she loves... Like those little conversations you have with a hairdresser about how much she loves those little uh, tiny conversations with a random person. 
You're gonna have also like, like just the smiles that she knows people have after they get a good haircut. Like, hey, because like for, for people like for, at least for me is like when I get a haircut, it's like a reset for me as a person. Like, hey, I'm looking pretty fucking good. This is awesome. And I'm imagining that makes her feel really good that she allows yes. people to to like achieve their best. What what we can do with this game is give a dating simulator that like while it is about like trying to help these people relax so that they don't destroy the end of the world, it is a dating mm-hmm. simulator that will give our character and our players the ability to see a bunch of different walks of life and why people really find themselves in those Aww. callings. Why people Aww, actually find an hard. adoration for hairdressing. Why people like being that's on so... a boat and seeing fish in an aquarium. Why people dedicate their Aww. whole lives to like caring for animals and working in dog shelters and trying to like move up in the world in that like kind of facet see i love i love that idea because it's so like microscopic and not in the sense of like meaning but like it's it's like the antithesis of, of of cosmic horror the idea of cosmic horror is that there are so many things bigger than us that we cannot understand or cope with and that's terrifying but what gives life meaning are those little things of like seeing like the hairdresser talking about hey this is my day job and it gives my life meaning it gives me purpose it gives me it gives me love and like the i and that i think that's just such a cool like fuck you to like the ideas of like being afraid of things bigger than us and i love yeah. that I, I actually really love that as a concept dude Fuck yeah, this game rocks. This is a game. <laughs> AJ, AJ, we didn't make a stinky game. That was Damn our goal, it. and we went into it, and we were <laughs> like, fuck, <laughs> shit. Fuck. Jerry from Legal is at again. work again. God, fuck. Ah, <sighs> man. Oh, wait, 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 shit. wait, 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 wait. I can fix it, I can fix it, I can fix it, I can fix it. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> what do you got? Every episode has a season pass. <laughs> Every episode is like buying a full brand new game. Every episode has a season pass and you can only get experience during during by doing loops. By doing consistent loops, you fill out oh, the season God. pass. And that's how you get the collectibles. <laughs> you're not rewarded for the late game stuff by in-game finds. You're late you're rewarded for the late game stuff because of the, the season pass. You finish the season oh, pass on no. our Cthulhu update. And then you get the collectible <laughs> that you'll need for the true ending eight months down the line when we finally release the final <laughs> game. We cracked it. Thank you, Avengers, for being our shitty nugget. Yeah. All right, cool. There we go. I'm, I'm happy we saved it in the last. There we go. We we do have a quota to keep, and we can't be making great games, man. We got we to gotta make the stinky ones. Do you think an episodic <laughs> game with a season right. pass works for making it stinky enough? I mean... I mean, that's. I think that's what makes it stinky is that it doesn't work. <laughs> like, I don't look at Avengers and think of their battle pass, and I'm like, that works. I'm like, no, it doesn't work, and that's why I hate it. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, yeah, an episodic game with a battle pass, I feel like is that's shitty enough. Uh, tragically, the world that we live in, I w- it's only a matter of time. But like for now, I mean, for now, it's still parody. Admit, 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 admittedly, AJ, I'm okay putting on something that. Is supposed to feel like it's shitty, but isn't really like it isn't really detrimental to the game. I'm just trying to keep face here. I'm actually kind of low key happy we made a good game. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, totally. We we'll put a fucking battle pass on this thing and make a whole lot of money. Hell yeah, I'm down. I'm yeah. down for it. Wink. <laughs> All right, I think we're ready to go to patch notes <laughs> now. For, okay. Hello, everybody, and welcome to patch notes. We got another serious patch notes uh, we kind of want to go into today. AJ, what do you got? Please make sure that you are registered to vote. Here in California, we're starting to get our mail-in ballots shipped to all of us. So wherever you are, voting registration or voting times are here. So we need to be out there voting. If you are in an Mm -hmm. area that still has a deadline upcoming to get registered to vote, get registered to vote. Go to, I believe it's votesaveamerica.org, I believe. or vote. Yes, I believe that is it. Just Google Vote Save America, get registered, find out if you're registered, be ready to vote, and Mm -hmm. make sure that you do vote. This is the most important election that I've ever faced in my life. It's probably one of the most important elections that you've seen in your lives. Please register to vote and get your ballots shipped in. Regardless of where you align, wherever, uh, you know where we align. It's just it's just important. Like voting is a is a big thing. And I think this is going to decide a lot of. A lot of fates for a lot of people. So I think it's being proactive in that is very important. Um, and it's not hard. It's not hard. I think with that, we're going to go ahead and leave this episode here. 
as always, thank you all so much for listening. Our intro and outro is Cheap Shot by Anna Monaguchi, an excellent song from an excellent band for an excellent game. I have been your host, AJ Hart. And I have been your other host, Blake Rea. This has been Spiritual Successor, and these are cool games that should not be made. Go vote! Vote! It's important! Go vote! Vote! Go vote! Go vote! 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 vote.